Well, hello there and good day. Thank you for joining me. I am Frost PDP, and today we are continuing our tutorial series on Crusader Kings 2. This is episode 6, the Intrigue tab. So, Intrigue is the F7 key, and it's super complicated. Probably the most complicated tab there is, because there's basically two tabs inside of one. The first is what it sounds like, which is Intrigue, where you have plots, prisoners, threats, stuff like that. The other is decisions, however, and this is where the game gets super weird. Because here is where you can make a lot of decisions for your country. I can't begin to show you them all, because some of them are exclusive to certain countries or cultures or religions. So I'm only going to show you the basic ones that are available, and that's just going to have to do, because there's not much I can do other than tag swap around and whatnot. Last episode, by the way, we introduced the concept of tag swapping, as is known in EU4, or character, you know, using the play command, basically changing characters. You can only do that through console cheats, but sure, it's useful for, for tutorials. And I've done a little bit of that to set up a situation in the Empire, but I can't display that situation until we hit play. So let's first go through decisions. As you can see, decisions are what they sound like. There's no tooltip for it, but it's basically things you can decide to do. For example, shut the gates. During an epidemic, rulers can shut the gates to avoid contact with the commoners and hopefully be safe from infection. Uh, there are conditions to each decision you would want to make. For example, to shut the gates, I have to not be a prisoner, not be busy with feasting, hunting, travel, or other special activities. And one of these two things must be true. I have to either be paranoid, which is a character trait, or there has to be an epidemic active and close by. Finally, there's one last thing that locks you out. It's called Abandon the Commoners. Basically, once you go into shutting the gates, and then you leave shutting the gates, you get the penalty Abandon the Commoners. So you can't just toggle it on and off. You can only deploy it when you want to. Shutting the gates is really important because <clears throat> when there is a disease, uh, you can get that disease and get sick and die, which is not a good thing. Unless, I guess, you have a really old character you want dead. But... Let's say you don't want to die, you shut the gates so that you can ride out the storm. It's just like in the Middle Ages, when a plague would happen, you'd shut the gates and hope to God you didn't get sick. And sometimes you would, sometimes you wouldn't. Uh, this was introduced, I can't even remember which expansion this was induced in. I mean, the Reapers do, it has to be the Reapers do. And it simulates the Black Plague and other diseases in the world. Um, there is even a disease map mode, which the game just started, so of course it's empty, but as soon as play starts, this will fill up. I'll try to remember to go back to it. Um, once you shut the gates, uh, there is a timer that starts that you can run out of food and start starving to death, and other negative events can happen. So you only shut the gates when you need to. But that's another story. The other important decision, and by the way, these, these illuminated looking ones at the top are considered important decisions. You can toggle that on and off with this little green thing. Uh, hold a grand tournament. If you have enough prestige and you have enough wealth, you can hold a tournament. And if you've ever seen Game of Thrones, this is like the hands tournament. It's what it sounds like. A bunch of people from your realm get together and duke it out and see who the best is. And you can take part in it or not take part in it, and you can get rewards if you win and you could die if you fight so it's a thing uh some other ones are promote a commander this just you know makes a soldier appear who is uh potentially a commander then there's invite a holy man and this it only costs 25 piety and i can just give myself 5,000 piety so let's do this we're gonna hit invite a holy man to court and Sigmund von Walbeck has appeared at your court ready for employment. And don't mind all the debug stuff. This is a guy who's going to have a high learning score. Great, okay. What about a commander? Look, Victor von Patternborn has showed up. He's got a martial score of 24. He's a really good fighter. If I was looking for someone to give land to, or if I was looking for a commander, I would now have a really, actually really good commander. I'm going to go... I'm going to check my minor titles. I'm going to notice I have a bunch of scrubs. And I'm going to appoint Victor as commander. 
In fact, he's so good, I'm going to put him on the left flank. He has a flanker trait, by the way, so he does really well on a flank. Uh, I'm going to put him on my left flank, so he's really an amazing fighter. Great. Excellent. Good. Present debutant. Uh, a courtier named Marguerite appears. Basically, if you need a wife, you hit this button. Or if you just need, like, a lady in general, great, you now have a lady. Hold a feast is what it sounds like. Uh, if the month is if it's an appropriate time of the year, you can have a feast. And it's just a way to build prosperity in your capital, which is a mechanic we'll go over another time. And it's a way to make people like you. Same with the summer fair. It's a good thing to do, but it's not necessary. All right, here we get to some interesting ones. Borrow 300 gold from Jewish merchants. This is like taking a loan out in any other game. You can only click this button once. Um, your vassals won't like it. You'll get 300 bucks, but you owe them 350. So I'm going to do that real quick. Hey, I borrowed money from the Jews. I made money. Now I want to repay that loan. Cool. Done, right? No big deal. And then I can take the loan out at a later time. So basically, if you need money right away, you take it out. You pay it back later, and until you pay it back, you suffer a temple vassal opinion. Cool. Search for a smith is what it sounds like. Uh, you you begin a search for a blacksmith to produce an item, usually armor. Buy indulgence for your sins is you send a letter a letter to the pope, hoping you can get um, an indulgence, which boosts your piety. Cool. We didn't need that, but we did it. Expel the jewelry. This is a Thing to be careful of. First of all, you have to be independent to trigger it. You have to be Christian, Muslim, or Mazdan. You can't be Israelite. But it is a way to do what it says. You basically kick Jewish people out of your realm. This is one of the more controversial things Paradox has in the game. But it has a lot of historical relevance, especially during the Crusade period. So it makes sense to have this as a mechanic. Um, you lose prestige, you gain a lot of gold because you steal all their stuff. You lose 10% national tax modifier and 2 diplomacy. Any character that is of Jewish religion has to leave your realm. And there are also associated penalties to technology where every so often you'll just basically lose tech points. Um, employing a Jewish counselor means you can randomly get tech points, so something to keep in mind. There is a strategy, I'm not going to fully demonstrate it, but I'll show you the first step. Where you borrow money from the Jews, then you kick them out so you don't owe them money anymore. But if you kick them out, you have to reinvite them with a future character to do that again. So it's it's not something that I usually use as a mechanic unless I am absolutely desperate and have no better options. It's a last resort. Treat it as such. And it, if it makes you feel kind of bad, that's the point. You should feel kind of bad for doing that. Uh, employ a court physician will randomly generate a physician type. I find that button to be very useless unless you have characters with no learning skill if you're a small country. Normally you will have somebody with a learning skill of 19 or so available to make your court physician. It's based on learning skill. Uh, yeah, there's the possibility that your randomly generated physician will have a trait like doctor, but he can also randomly get that while being your doctor and a high learning score is the main determiner or whether or not the guy's an idiot. So yeah, that's the thing to know. There are other decisions you can make. If you're the Roman Empire, you can decide to form the Roman Empire. If you're uh, certain characters like Charlemagne, you can decide to form certain empires that way. Certain religions and culture groups have other decisions available to them. Um, these decisions are on a character level. Every character can be making these decisions so long as they are allowed to. Cool, cool. Let's look at plots. First of all, there are four tabs. There's my plots, known plots, prisoners, threats. Threats basically just shows you factions, which is this tab. And I'm probably not going to make an episode about factions unless I have an opportunity to really show it off. But like I've said before, factions are basically a group of vassals who get together and decide they want to have a change in your empire. Either they want to change crown laws, they want to put someone else on the throne, they might want independence, they might want a change in the ruling style. Um, 
it's all measured based on the strength of the combined faction versus you. Uh, if it gets up to 70%, you'll get a warning. If it gets up to 100%, you're in actual trouble. Uh, 90 or above, they might declare on you, but if they're more than 100, they probably will declare war. And they basically make they give you a threat, either comply or we revolt. You don't want revolts, but depending on what they're demanding, you want to not let them have it. Uh, Veracity Trigger and I were doing a campaign where he tried to fight a revolt against Crown Power, and I wound up having to suffer three Crown Power losses in a row, which is fine because he's the new player. He can't. He, it's easier for me to deal with that. I don't mind helping him out with that. So threats are basically just factions. My plots, where you choose a plot. First of all, let's say I wanted to murder this guy. I don't, but let's say I did. I would right click on his portrait, go down to plot to kill, click this button, do it. That is the easy way to find a person to kill. You have to kill them through their portrait. There's also this little button here that says choose a plot. Typically the only plot you can do is murder anyway, so no big deal, right? I have no reason to kill this guy. But now that it says kill Dugato of Mycin, there are these three little things. Auto invite plotters, success conditions, which means did you succeed or not, and then cancel. You hit cancel, it'll double check that you want to abandon before you abandon. This little button here, auto invite plotters. Let's show you what that does. On your own, you have a plot power of 27.2%. That can be different depending on what your character's intrigue score is. Mine is pretty crap, so... And it's, a, it's an opposed role, right? Like, his intrigue is probably pretty high, because if I remember correctly, I gave him the intrigue focus. So he's got the same intrigue as me, so it's really hard for me to kill him alone but I can invite people to my plot some of them will be happy to join me like this guy he's willing to join the plot if you hover over the little thumb it will give you his reasoning he doesn't like Otto but he does like me so he'll help me same here if this guy doesn't want to help me because he has political concerns Actually, I should be clear that minus opinion Duke Otto means he does kind of like Duke Otto. He's got a plus four opinion, but he likes me a lot. This person, on the other hand, is kind of in between, right? There's this little hand that looks like it's wiggling. It almost wants a gold bag. Uh, it might. Per it says right here, it might be persuaded with a bag of gold. Her opinion of me is 69, her opinion of him is 10. So, she has a base reluctance because nobody really wants to be part of a plot, just to be a part of a plot. Because then if you get caught, you go to jail, and you get killed, it's a bad thing. So, remember we talked about title revocation law? People plotting is a good way to get title revocation op opportunities without tyranny. Uh, so, she wants a bag of gold. You send a bag of gold. She wants a lot of money. Money isn't an object because we're cheating. It will improve her opinion of me, which is always a good thing. You can always just send money to people to buy a bag of gold. And again, you right-click on a portrait to bring up this menu. Send a bag of gold. Awesome, now she's the thumbs up. Now if I hit the invite plot button, she will say yes. But do you see how many people are in my realm? And a lot of them are iffy, but a lot of them are already thumbs up. So I can send gifts to people and make them thumbs uppers. And that's fine. Especially when... Uh, they're not landed characters because not landed characters cost the least to buy stuff. Basically, the amount that you pay to improve their opinion is commensurate to their power. And I could go through and I can hit the invite to plot button for everyone. But Paradox, our game developers here, we're really smart about this. They have an auto invite button. You click that button, you will automatically invite people willing to be part of your plot into the plot. I'll demonstrate that and then I'll cancel the plot because I don't really want to kill this guy. I have no need to. Then there's known plots. When you are a ruler, your spy master is always out there trying to discover plots. Oh, hold on, this guy's not doing anything I want him to do. In fact, none of my council is doing any dang thing. You're gonna do statecraft. Uh, you're gonna train troops in my capital. You're gonna collect taxes in my capital, or not. Sorry, I'm having some, some weird issues with buttons here. I accidentally clicked on the army from way afar, and it decided to take me to the army screen. That's the thing to be aware of. So my, my spy master is scheming. He's got a better chance to discover plots. He'll probably find bad guys. 
He's got. He's only got a skill of eight. We're gonna. We're. We're, we're firing him. Okay. New guy has a skill of fourteen. He's gonna be good at finding plots. And I'm just gonna improve religious relations with the Pope just for fun. Okay. Back to the intrigue tab. I don't know of any plots. There's this button called auto stop plots where you will automatically tell people who you catch plotting to stop plotting. If they'll listen to you, that's great. If they won't, then they stay in this list and you can imprison them. We're actually going to set this to speed three by hitting the plus three plus button two times. We're going to unpause by hitting the space button. Space button works to pause in single player, not multiplayer. Keep that in mind. So we're running at speed three. You can go up to speed five. Time ticks. Um, the Pope likes me. He's going to let me spend money to gain piety. Or I can just be like, nah, he's asking too much money and the Pope will like me less. Great. Pope likes me more. Awesome. Does me no good, but okay. You see how I have a negative balance, by the way? Last episode we were talking about retinue. You can click here to find your balance. This is your shield. This brings you to your primary title. My domain makes me 55 ducats. My feudal tax makes me 110 ducats per year. But my retinue upkeep is 290 per year. So I'm actually losing money per year. It doesn't matter because I have infinite money because I'm in cheat mode, but if you were playing seriously, you'd probably want half retinue reinforcement. And as you can see, my retinues are reinforcing 79 soldiers per month. It usually rolls over on the month. Okay. Pope is upset with my law of free investiture. Okay. So we'll talk about that real quick. This, this realm is different than the other realm that we were playing in. I have this thing called an investiture, which is determining who appoints bishops, the Pope or the secular liege. Papal investiture means the Pope decides who bishops are. Free investiture means I can appoint bishops. And the Pope will not like me for that. I'm just gonna bribe him because I don't care. On the first of the month, the soldiers that are supposed to reinforce, reinforce. I pay my money out of my pocket. And let's look at our known plots. We have no known plots, but we do have 195% plot power. Plot power break points, which means like points where you get an advantage at 100%. So 200% is better than 195% or 100%. 100% to 199% are all the same, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong, but basically once you have 100% plot power, you have a chance of killing the guy. 200% plot power has a better chance of killing the guy, so on and so forth. I don't actually want to kill the guy, so I'm going to cancel this plot. But there are other plots you can do. For example, I can plot to revoke a county from somebody. Let's say I have a claim on a county. I don't, but let's say I did. I could plot to revoke that county from the person and take it for myself. Um, that's a good thing if I want to acquire more land. Hold on a second here. So my de jure duchy is Franconia, but Mines owns Franconia. Can I plot to revoke Mines? No, I cannot. That's silly. And the game is really weird. It'll tell you all these plots you can't do for some reason. And it's just an endless litany of them. Like, I can't revoke mines. Why not? One of these must be true. Is in a county held in the capital duchy of Kaiser Heinrich IV? Well, I am the Duke of Franconia last I looked. But that might not be my capital duchy, so that might be why. Is in a count's secondary county. Okay, so basically there's reasons why I can't revoke that. That's fine. Let's go to speed five and let's just see if we can't a have nothing stupid happen okay we have righteous imprisonment this little thing up here means somebody is trying to plot something you can imprison a subject without incurring tyranny note that an empowered council might still object by the way this thing is an offer for marriage this guy wants to marry my that courtier i summoned he's the heir to the house of doria i don't care fine go get married you don't usually want to marry off your dynasty members willy-nilly, but if they're not your dynasty, it's not a big deal. So Duke Orloff of Saxony, who wants to be on my council and is trying to kill Count Eglimar of Oldenburg. I, I knew that because I told him to do it because I played as him for two seconds. 
He's ill, he's infirm. I can imprison him. The thing you need to know about imprisoning. This is key. If you try to imprison someone who you don't have a good reason to imprison, like them being the leader of a plot or having done something inappropriate to you. If you try to imprison someone you can't imprison, your counsel will probably be against it. You can check your counsel here, by the way. Uh, I clearly have an empowered counsel when it comes to imprisoning, but my counsel is four on four. My side wins. Um, you need to be aware that if you try to imprison someone willy-nilly, like this guy, let's try, try to imprison him. Using this option is viewed as tyrannical and will lower all subjects' opinion of you by 40%. You don't do this. This is a way to break your realm. Don't do it. Righteous imprisonment is the way to go. Uh, it's a percentage-based chance. I have a 17% chance of success based on my state entry. If I fail, he might declare war or flee to another court. Since we have evidence or or Luf is the leader of a plot, no one will object. Okay. What does all this mean? If he is not a direct vassal of mine, let's say he is a count under a duke. If I were to try to imprison this guy and failed, and by the way, it's easier to imprison guys lower down on the chain. Courtiers and even counts are easy to imprison, dukes are not. But, if I were to try to imprison this guy for some reason, and I failed, because he is not my direct vassal, he had, there's a liege above him between him and me. Remember that chart I showed you at the first episode? Let me see if I can pull it up real fast. I can't. Um, basically, remember that, that chart where it's the bronze guys, then these guys, then these guys? Um, yeah, this is a count. He's under a duke. If I try to imprison him and fail, he will run to another realm. He will try to find safety. Whereas, if I try to imprison someone directly under me, even if it's a count that's directly under me but is trying to kill somebody and I fail, they will revolt. Uh, it will be just like a faction fight, except you're just fighting that guy. So, let me show you a trick. I know... Ordoloff is trying to plot something. I know where his capital is, because his capital has a shield over to the county of Lundberg. I'm going to summon my vassal's army. It's not my own, because why would I ever do that? And I'm going to tell them all to go to Lundberg. And I'm just going to wait a little while. Even his army is there. And I'm going to wait until all these armies are on top. This is um, a random event. My vassal, Count Guillaume of Bourgeon, is concerned about his non-inheriting sons. He asks you to consider them when looking for new vassals. There are three options here. One, give the guy land. He becomes my direct vassal. Number two, I can't give out land to anyone who asks. Number three, he will get this land but owe me a favor. As a general rule, unless you are over your domain limit by more than one, because I, I usually play one above my domain limit, but two above is bad. You start stacking up penalties. You need to always check an event like this, because there's more than one format this event can fire off. And like if you remember multiple choice questions from high school or whatever, you'll know that sometimes you'll get the same question rewritten a different way with different answers, so it's not just A all the time. This is one of those things. So this opinion, this option, I can't give out land to anyone who asks. I don't want to give my land away. I'm going to set, select this. But if this pops up in a different format, yeah, it's just going to suck. I'm going to turn off car info for a second so that it just shows what the, you would naturally see. Uh, if you, if I give him this money, if I give him land, he'll give me gold. If I give him land, he'll give me favor or nothing. So it doesn't say anything specific, but I have a feeling he's going to not like me for declining. Yeah. Oh, no, it's raised levies. By the way, if you have vassal levies raised for any amount of time, for an unclearly, for what might be an unjust reason, oh, stuff's happened too fast. That's why I had it on speed 5. I shouldn't have. Once you raise your vassal's levies, unless you're defending your realm, or under other specific circumstances 
If you're on the offensive, if you start a war, the longer you have your vassal's troops raised, the less they will like you. So anyway, Count Numbnuts has provided me, I, don't, I just don't care who he is, has provided me with proof that Lord Mayor Jean Siko of Ancona has been viciously slandering me. How should I use this information? Well, I can expose and denounce him publicly, giving me a reason to arrest him. So, remember how I said you need a reason to arrest people? Uh, let's turn that overlay off for a second. You need a reason to arrest people. Um, guess what? If I click this button, he will not like me. Or I will not like him. Uh, I could threaten him to get out of factions. This is a way to keep people from being in factions against you if there's a threat. Or I can just not do anything. I don't have to do anything with this information. You don't get to turn around and use it later, which is unfortunate. The game should store this. But the game stores enough information that it bogs down anyway. So this is all related to intrigue, by the way, because of the purple outline. So it's good to know. But let's say uh, I don't like this guy for whatever reason. He likes me a lot, though. I don't want to mess with him. I'm just going to keep this information to myself. So anyway, now that I've got 10,000 men on this guy's county, I can still imprison him because he's still committing a crime. I still only have a 17% chance of imprisoning him, but when he starts fighting back against me, he's not going to be able to do much. So, once again, we're going to check and make sure our council is going to let us do this. Because if our council isn't going to let us do this, if our council's got a big red X here, and we try to do it anyway, it still counts as tyranny. This is, by the way, again, in the law's imprisonment, council has power versus I have power. And I would have to bribe everybody to change this law. It's not worth trying. A lot of these laws are nuisance laws. As long as you pay attention, you're not likely to screw up too bad. And again, you can see this guy's a loyalist. He will vote like me no matter what. These guys are pragmatists. They're probably like, hey, uh, you know, probably a bad idea to break the law. These glory hounds just, I do not want you to weaken powerful vassals. So he's got an, an actual reason for not wanting to vote this way. He doesn't want me to weaken a powerful vassal. And imprisoning people will weaken them. These guys both vote the same way. This guy has no particular opinion. And these guys' diplomacy scores beat mine. So sometimes they diplomacy score matters. I'm going to try to imprison him. I failed. So he's raised his flag in rebellion to arms. Now, you'll notice that Saxony suddenly looks like an independent country. Because it sort of is. And I am fighting him and also all of his vassals. Even if they like me a lot. They're his vassals. He goes to war with me. They go to war with me. I have 10,000 men on his capital, however, and I'm going to win this battle very easily. Battle, I mean, it's it's a war, but it's really not much of a war. So we're going to let some time pass, and we're just going to stomp this guy. His troops left my army, by the way, and uh, that's fine. What I'm doing right now is I'm... Well, this would suddenly make for a very interesting playthrough. I've been excommunicated. Uh, that means people have a Cassus Belly against me for some reason. Why the hell would you excommunicate me? I guess because, uh, people... I guess because I kept free investiture. He decided he didn't like me and told me to go get out of the Catholic faith. That is another real-life thing, by the way. I can issue... Now you have a decision for issuing a declaration of repentance. See, because I'm excommunicated... I can basically be like, yo, dude, what's wrong with you? Like, I'm not a bad guy. Let me back in. He's agreed to lift the excommunication for 900 ducats. So now I'm not excommunicated anymore. And as you see it, I'm sieging down his holdings. I'll, I'll go into more detail with this another time. But the point is, I'm taking his land. I'm just going to make this war fast and easy looking. Um... You want a non-aggression pact, I don't care. And again, I'm just speed th speeding through this war. I have a son, hooray. That means I have a new heir. I know this makes it look like playing this game is super easy, and in a way it is, because this is not a complicated situation. He wants peace. 
He wants a white piece. That means nobody loses anything. I don't want that. I want to imprison him. Force piece. Nope. Can't do that. Watch to the next least defended castle. Alright, once you are at 100% war score with an enemy. Positive, by the way. You can enforce peace. Now, why is this guy hostile to me? Denmark? Did he call Denmark into this war? No, so why is Denmark hostile? Sorry, this is just weird. He is actually... Okay, so here's something you need to be aware of. If you have a vassal that is rebelling against you, your neighbors may decide it's a perfect opportunity to try to take land from that vassal. Because your vassal's weak, and the AI thinks, hey, weak guy next to me, eat him. But he's still your vassal, and he's still revolting against you. You want to piece him out and take his land. Here's the catch. If your enemies, like Denmark, is invading Saxony for a war over Hamburg, if he's able to occupy even this top holding, one holding, that's all he's got to occupy, the liege, which is you, cannot piece out the rebelling vassal. I'll say it again. If a foreign enemy controls your rebelling vassal's land, any of it, you can't piece them out. So right now, enforce peace. Yes, he's totally beaten. He's at war. I can piece him out. If I let this siege conclude, I can't piece him out anymore. But because I can piece him out, I don't want to deal with this fight, I'm just going to enforce demands. Boom. And always make sure you're enforcing demands, by the way. I ha everyone has accidentally surrendered or accepted white peace. Always make sure you are enforcing the demands. I did. The revolt against the rule has ended. I've imprisoned this guy. I'm now going to stand down at my troops. Remember how I have my retinue in there from last episode? I've selected all my troops, grouped them all together. I hit the X button once. No retinues will be disbanded. No special event troops will be disbanded. Done. Hit OK. You notice I still have 803 troops raised. If I hit X again, that's my retinue. Keep that in mind. Anyway, I have now got a guy in prison. Intrigue tab. I also have five known plots. Hey, someone's trying to kill me. Everyone wants to imprison him. Pragmatists don't care much, but, you know, whatever. I have a 31% chance to imprison him. However, and this is what's weird, I can just ask him to end plot. I can ask him to stop. He's going to go, I'm really weak, and I've been caught. I'm not going to try to kill you. This guy is the Count of Schwaben. By the way, quick thing. As I hover over Duke Berthold, I see that it has that green, your vassal. That means he's my vassal. This guy is the Count of Schwaben. He has someone else, the Duke of Schwabia, on top of him. Meaning I can try to imprison him, and all of these pragmatists are like, hey, I dislike this character. They don't like him, they want him in jail, great. I'm going to hit in prison. Look, he managed to evade my guardsmen and fled to the court of someone else. Remember how I said earlier, vassal people under your vassals can't do anything? Yeah, that's that. Now this guy, his heir, inherited his land and is now the Count of Schwaben. Great, okay, fine by me, don't care. Back to what, well, I got this guy in prison. There's a lot of things I can do to him. First off, I can revoke his titles. Um, he will hate me, but because he is a traitor or a criminal or whatever, my vassals will not object. However, you see how my council's popped out here and there's five against them, three, four? If I do this, going against them will make them discontent it will be considered tyrannical. So even though he's a criminal, he still has enough council support because revoke title is still empowered to the council. He has enough council support that just stripping him of his land is not easy. I have to bribe these guys into letting me do this because they don't want me to weaken powerful vassals. Okay. I can banish him. Which, again, the council's not going to like. It costs you piety. Uh, it may be seen as tyrannical, even if he's a prisoner. Whatever. I can torture him, which hurts him a lot. Makes him hate me for life. And 
if you've got things like the trait kind, which I do, you can lose it. Once you torture someone, you release them from prison. Humiliate. Publicly humiliate them. They lose their prestige. They lose a lot of opinion from other people. And they get freed. You can put them in house arrest where they're less likely to... They can escape. They're more likely to escape. They will live for a long time. This is if you want somebody alive for some reason. Then there's throwing the oblet. You throw them in the dungeon and forget about them. There's no escape. His life expectancy will be bad. He loses two health and 20 diplomacy. Basically, if you can't directly kill someone, let's say they're your kin and executing them will make you a kin slayer, but you still want them dead, you throw them in the oblet. They die pretty soon. You inherit whatever you want to inherit. With me so far? Good. Because it gets complicated now. Plot to kill. He's in my prison. He's very easy for me to murder. But again, if you're trying to kill somebody you, and they're your kin, you might get Kinslayer. You might not want the murder on your, your soul, whatever. Execute imprisoned. Again, execution, the, the council cares. But I could chop his head off. There are two other options, which you can use strategically to make yourself a lot more powerful. One is Ransom Prisoner. And the higher the tier character, you know, Baron, Count, whatever, the more they cost. The King's Ransom is literally a lot of money. That's why it's King's Ransom. And if he could afford it, and I could even give him the money, he has 100 ducats. I can send him money so that he has enough money to ransom himself, and I just net the difference. But what if I don't need money? Because eh, I don't need money right now. What if instead... I just let him go. Characters who have a title, barons, counts, etc. If you release them from prison, your vassals will think you merciful, increasing their opinion of you by nine. So for characters who are duke or above, especially if you can net a vassal king, releasing them gives you multiples of three. So a baron is three, a count is six, a duke is nine, a king is twelve. This is a way to pump your opinion scores with your vassals let's look at my vassals opinions for a second sort by opinion most of them like me but there are still some who are like eh, he only likes me by six he's got a lot of things he wants control of he's just a nuisance right he thinks he's entitled to stuff that maybe he is entitled to it but maybe i don't want to give it to him but all these negative opinion modifiers make him not like me very much so what could i do well one thing I can do is release him from prison. And you can do these little things here, too. You can release, ransom, or execute. And you can exclude from... You can do this with mass stuff, too. There are ways to just do this en masse. Let people go. Reset. There's filters you can experiment with. I, they're relatively new to the game, and I don't use them very often. But this button's useful. I'm going to release him. Great. I no longer have him as a prisoner. I just fought a war for nothing. Or did I? Because now, when I sort by opinion, the Duke of Savoy, who used to like me by six, now has this plus nine modifier until 1070. So it's 1067. I just got three years of plus nine opinion. Now, the game will take the highest value, I think. So if you release another Duke, you'll get it for another nine years. If you release another Count, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could be wrong on that. It's a little complicated. But the point is you get three years of positive opinion. So as long as you have dukes trying to commit crimes and you can imprison them if you need extra opinion, it's just a nice thing to have. Anyway, there's a lot more I could probably talk about or demonstrate. Uh, but the truth is I'd really rather not throw anything more at you in this episode. I've already shown you a lot more than I have in any previous one. So, I'll stop here. I want to thank you all so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this series, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really does help the channel grow. It lets me know what you're watching so I can make more of it. And I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and I'm happy to help you out. And as always on this channel, La Paz.